Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode four of Learning AI with GitHub Copilot. My name is Gustavo, and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And today, today I'll be demonstrating how Copilot can help us explore a new AI and machine learning topic, computer vision. Similarly to the second episode, we'll be using Copilot's help in building a whole notebook with markdown cells in which we'll be asking specific questions to learn more about the topic. So let's just jump straight into it. The first thing we want to do with talking with Copilot in this sense is to ask them questions. As long as we ask them questions, we'll be, we'll be definitely receiving a nice answer. So the first thing I want to ask is, what is the basic, basic definition of computer vision? If you wait here, you see that Copilot's already given me an answer. And it just says, computer vision is the ability of a computer to see and understand the world around it. It is a field of study that focuses on how computers can gain a high level understanding from digital images or videos. Uh, if you if you want to keep exploring, you can actually keep, keep adding more into the question, but I think to this point, that's enough for us. So we want to add uh, ask the next question now. So we want to ask how this relates to machine learning. And I'll just go down here and ask it, uh, how are machine learning and AI used in computer vision? here again we're going to wait for Copilot to give us an answer and long answer but machine learning is a subset of ai we never know that that focuses on developing computer programs that can access data and use it to learn for themselves and in the case of computer vision machine learning is used to train algorithms to recognize patterns in images and videos and that's the main thing we're going to be using this year we're going to be using images and as data and training our models using that data. This is done by feeding algorithms a large set of labeled data. And by labeled data, we mean the data that already has uh, some sort of uh, notation next to it. So if you have an image, for example, of a dog, it's labeled as a dog. Or if it's an image of a cat, it's labeled as a dog and so on. And we're gonna have it lear learn to recognize the patterns. Uh, once the algorithm has learned to recognize the patterns, it can then be used to recognize those patterns in, in new images and videos. So you see that Copilot gives us actually quite extensive and thorough explanations. So it's a good tool to help uh, to help us learn more. Uh, with this in mind, I think the next question that would pop in my head is what structures are we gonna be using to train these models or, or how we're gonna be able to use this uh, information to, to work with the computers. So how about we ask, um, and you can see that actually uh, Copilot's already suggesting the, ne the next question. I can't wait for you to ask them more things. So the next question that popped into my head is uh, what machine learning structure is the most commonly used uh, in computer vision? And this is just for us to be able to learn um, and explore more into what we're going to have to use to carry out computer vision. The second, and, and here's the answer. You go back. The beginning. So it's suggesting convolutional neural networks, which is actually what I was hoping it would say. <laughs> uh, this is the most common uh, used, commonly used machine learning in uh, structure in computer vision. And these are just a type of neural network that is designed to recognize visual patterns from pixel uh, pre processing. That's the general idea. Uh, as you can see, Copilot uh, actually adds more into it. Uh, they are made of multiple layers of neurons that, are, that have learnable weights and biases. That's, basics of a neural network, but I don't want to go too deep into this because I want to ask Copilot what a neural network is. So that's going to jump into the next topic that we want to deal with. So let's just ask Copilot directly, what is a neural network? Just wait for it to give us a straight answer. And here we can say that a neural network is a machine learning model that is inspired by the human brain. That's why it's called neural network. <laughs> uh, it is made of multiple layers of neurons that have learn learnable ways and biases. And each neuron receives some inputs, performs a dot product of unoptionally follows it with a nonlinear uh, situation. So the whole network still expresses a single differentiable score function. And that basically means that the, the as, as it's learning, as it's processing the data, it's gonna be creating a whole new um, new output in which is gonna be able to predict things in the future. 
Now, the next thing we want to ask is what actually differentiates a convolutional neural network, because that's a that's the first neural network that Gopalo suggested. So I'm actually going to be asking it what differentiates a convolutional neural network. And hopefully we're going to be getting an answer. So if we go to the answer we're receiving, it it's going it's going back again into explaining what the type of uh, neural network it is. Uh, it's used to recognize visual patterns. And if you notice uh, from pixel images with minimal processing. And if you notice, this is similar to the answer we got before above. It just demonstrates that AI has no memory. Uh, it's just a statistical model, so it's bound to repeat itself sometimes. However, I'm sure it will have a specific area where we can expand upon it. So they're made of multiple layers of neurons that have learnable ways and biases. Each neuron layer is connected only to a few neurons to the previous layer, that's a new thing. And these neurons are arranged in three dimensions, width, height, and depth. The width and height dimensions refer to the spatial extent of the receptive field of the neurons, and the depth refers to the number of feature maps. Each neuron layer will perform a convolution operation on the input value and the input volume and compute the output of that neuron. That's the difference between a regular uh, neural network and a convolutional neural network. The convolutional one will actually perform a convolutional operation on it. And the output volume is called the activation map of that layer. The neurons in a layer will typically perform convolutions on the same receptive field, and the depth of the volume will increase as we go deeper and deeper into the network. And this allows the network to learn more complex features, in this case, such as, such as pixels and images, as we go deeper. And the final layer of the network is typically a fully connected layer that performs classification on the features learned by the convolutional layers. So do you see, as, as you ask, it still provides a lot, a lot of information, which is quite thorough, uh, but sometimes it is bound to repeat itself and that's fine. Now, now that we have a better understanding of what tools we're gonna be needing to implement this, I wanna ask what tools we can, we can use to actually implement this, uh, this kind of uh, structure. So I'm just gonna ask and see if Copilot can help us with knowing this. So I'm gonna ask, what tools are most commonly used to work with convolutional neural networks? In this case, we're gonna see, perfect. So the most commonly used tools to work with convolutional neural networks are, K are Keras and PyTorch. These are two uh, different tools. Uh, Keras is a high-level neural network API written in Python and capable of running on top of TensorFlow, CNTK, or Athena. It was developed by a focus on enabling the fast experimentation and being able to go from idea to result with the least possible delay is key to doing good research. Now, uh, PyTorch is an open source machine learning uh, library based on the Torch library used for applications such as computer vision and natural language processing. Primarily developed by Facebook's AI research lab uh, called FAIR. And as you can see, this is probably pulling everything from a search, but it's actually the right answer. Uh, it is free and open source software released under the modified blah, 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 and so on. Uh, this is great because PyTorch is actually the next topic that we're going to be touching upon. And I'm very happy that uh, Copilot was able to suggest this. So as you can see, it not only is bound to provide us with knowledge, but also add some uh, useful information up towards tools and things that we can be using on this. So the next thing is I want to ask, um, well, it kind of already gave me the answer, but I want to ask if it knows what, what PyTorch is just in case. So what is PyTorch? And again, it gave me the pretty much the same answer. So it does know what it is. It does know that it's an open source machine learning library and that's the one that we're going to be using. Uh, however, one thing that we have to keep in mind while working with PyTorch is that uh, it works using something called tensors. Uh, this is structured, uh, this very, uh, is used all, all the way throughout PyTorch. So I wanna ask about it just to make sure that we can understand what the structure is. So if I ask, what is a tensor? Perfect, it also has the answer for it. And it says, a tensor is a generalization of vectors and matrices to potentially higher dimensions. So internally, PyTorch represents tensors as uh, an n-dimensional array. That's a, an array of n dimensions and being whatever, uh, any number. And tensors are similar to NumPy's and the arrays, which are also a similar type of structure. 
um, except that tensors can run on GPUs and other specialized hardware. So that this means that even though it's very similar to other um, to other structures, uh, this one can actually run inside of video processing uh, systems, such as a GPU, a graphics processor unit, and that allows us to uh, process process images or data faster. Awesome. Uh, so I think we have the general concepts uh, to start delving deeper into computer vision. But instead of trying to code a whole model on our own, uh, how about we take advantage of Copilot's help and analyze an existing one? So tune in with us in our next episode where we'll be exploring computer vision program with the help of Copilot. Thanks for joining.